Hello. We're going to be solving for absolute value equations, which means we're probably going to have to graph absolute value equations as is the uh, tendency. Whenever we solve a specific type of equation, we're going to have to graph it. And that's exactly what we're going to do. But we're going to start with this first, and we might mix it up with absolute value and in, uh, inequalities too. Let me decide which one I'm going to do first, but we'll get to that. There was an introduction I did with absolute values, and basically what I said was that the absolute value was the distance away from zero. Uh, for instance, uh, when you're talking about the absolute value of 3, you could be talking about its distance on a number line both ways, 3 and negative 3. And that's essentially what we have to do here. Let me show you how to do the first one. Now you could go ahead and substitute in values that will work. What value will work that will make this equation true? One of them is 3. The absolute value of 3 is 3. But there is another answer that works. The absolute value of negative 3 is also equal to 3. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to uh, put in a value for x that will work. The problem is you don't want to just sit there and you know keep doing va values and usually it's two values but not always. So keep this in mind. I, yeah, I know that if you plug in 11, 11 minus 3 is 8. But what will also work for it? And by the way, the answer is not negative 11. Uh, 11 will work but another one will. So I like doing this method even though students don't like necessarily doing it at first, they do find it to be the best and most practical way to do it. Because it just usually arrives to the answer as quickly as possible. So here's how you do absolute value. When you account for uh, absolute value, you're accounting for distance, both its positive and its negative. Here we go. So you say that x equals 3, or x equals its opposite, or the other distance on the number line from 0. x equals negative 3. And they both work. x equals negative 3. Negative 3, the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. That's about it. What you're doing when you're trying to solve these problems is you're trying to uh, solve for as positive and negative. That doesn't come off in this example, but it will come off in the next example more clearly. So here we go. We're going to do x minus 3 equals 8 and solve for 8. I'm sorry, solve for x. And then, besides doing its positive distance away from 0, we're going to do, well, the other one is not a negative distance, but it's the opposite side. So x minus 3 equals 8, and x minus 3 equals negative 8. That's how we solve an absolute value. That's all. That's all we do. Now, we're going to add 3 to both sides. x equals 11, and we're going to add 3 to both sides. That's not true. Yeah, it is. 11 minus 3 is 8. Absolute value of 8 is 8. Negative 5 plus negative 3, or negative 5 minus 3, is negative 8. Absolute value of negative 8 is 8. They both work. And those are your two answers. I mean, so, like, what I'm doing is I'm just saying that I just drop the absolute value and it's equal to 8, and I drop the absolute value, and yeah, precisely. It's positive and it's negative. So that always, yeah, it always works, but you have to make sure you're solving correctly first. You can't just say, oh, it's equal to 4 and negative 4. That doesn't work. What you have to do is get everything in the absolute value by itself first. And I'll show you. So you have to get rid of this negative 5 and 3. But you don't want to divide by 3 first, because if you divide by 3, you divide it here, you divide it here, and you divide it here. Instead, what you want to do is just add 5 first. I mean, I suppose you could divide by 3. It's just much more difficult. Why would you make a problem difficult? So you get 3 times the absolute value of 2x minus 7 equals 9. Now what we want to do is we want to divide by 3. I, don't, I want just the absolute value by itself. 3 divided by 3 is 1. That's fine. And I get 2x minus 7 in the absolute value sign is equal to 9 divided by 3, which is 3. Now I can work my magic. Now I can say, oh, so it's a, uh, let me separate that really quickly. 2x minus 7 equals 3. 2x minus 7 equals negative 3. Now students are always looking for shortcuts here. Don't look for the shortcut. Just, just do the problem. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say it. People are always looking for shortcuts, and they end up going three times longer than what they had to do. 
if he just did it the regular way, he would have been there faster. I'm just telling you. In the long run, it makes more sense. Well, I want to think about it as quickly as my teacher does. Well, that comes with training and experience. So, you know, just do it this way first. And then it'll be better. That's a 7. It doesn't look like one. 2x equals 10. Divide by 2. x equals 5 is one of the answers. Two x equals four. Divide by two on both sides. X equals two is the other answer. If you don't believe me, go ahead and substitute that in. In fact, I will do it right now. Two times five is ten. Minus seven is three. Three times three is nine. Nine minus five is four. Bam. Two. Two times two is four. Four minus seven is negative three. Absolute value of negative three is three. Three times three is nine. Nine minus five is four. There you go. Sometimes I have students who want to try to guess what the answer is you'll be sitting there a lot longer trying to guess on some of these problems. Some of them I agree, they're easy, er to guess. But some of them, just do it this way. Yeah, I could probably guess it too, but I don't really want to. It's better that way. Now, like every single problem, sometimes things just don't work out in life. And not so much for this case. And there's a reason why. Negative 2 plus negative 6 is 8. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, uh, this one won't work. And let me just explain why it won't work and that you have to recognize why it won't work. You could get an answer if you uh, did it wrong afterwards, and, um, but the answer would never work inside this problem. It would just never, ever work. Never. It just, it just can't work. Um, let me explain why that is. No matter what x value you substitute in and you figure this out, the absolute value of a number will always be positive. So no matter what comes out of this factory, this, you know, mill, it's always going to be positive. Well, no matter what you substitute in, it's never going to equal negative 8. So the answer for this one's no real solution. And before uh, we go into why that is, etc., etc., let me help you out. This one's no real solution. And like I said, anything you substitute into the x value, no matter if it's positive or negative, the absolute value will make it positive. Positive number can't equal a negative number. Now, you can go ahead and try the math yourself if you want to. You are so inclined to do it. But my video lessons can only last so long on YouTube and the internet itself, so I don't really have that time uh, to go further. But go ahead and try it yourself if you want to. And then try substituting it in here and seeing if you can get negative 2. And the answer is you can't. You can't make an absolute value number negative once it goes out of the absolute value. It's just that simple. So that's the arbitrary case there. The rest of these work out splendidly. And what you should notice is this. If you have an absolute value and it's equal to a negative number and there's no negative in front of here, you know it's going to be a trick case. As simple as that. It's all there is to it. If you've got you know, the absolute value of something equal and negative, no real solution. Just stop right there, no real solution. You can always test it out if you want to, but then now you won't be puzzled if you do test it out and can't figure out why it works. With that said, have a good day. Goodbye.